Hey guys, Zach for Creative Lighting here, and today we're going to talk about how to calculate amps for a lighting project. This is the most important thing you can know when you're planning any sort of decorating project where you have to hang up lights, because there are limitations to all light strings uh, so far as how much power they can handle. So you have to be aware of that before you start stringing up hundreds and hundreds of lights because you can cause strings to fail, trip a breaker, or do something like that. So save yourself a headache, plan ahead, and you're going to be happier for it. So what do you need to know? The first thing is the wattage of the bulbs you intend to use. This is really important because you have to be aware of that when you're calculating the amps later on so you know how many lights to use on a single run of light strings. And in the description below, I'll put some of the most common bulbs and their wattages. So if you don't know that already, maybe you can see what bulbs you're going to be using, what the common wattage is, and that'll go a long way in knowing how to plan your decorating project. The next thing is knowing what type of wire you plan to use. Wire has different uh, gauges and they also have different insulation ratings. This is 18 gauge wire, this is a 7 amp wire, which is pretty common. Uh, most of the time for Christmas lights, patio light strings, it's some sort of um, 18 gauge wire, maybe a 16 gauge that handles 7 to 10 amps, sometimes more than that depending on the size of the string and the the wire gauge of course. But have to know that because this is ultimately how many lights you can use in a single run. If you only have a 10 amp wire, or 10, yes, 10 amp wire, sorry, you can only run 10 amps worth of lights on that wire. Otherwise you're going to run into some problems. So, you also need to know if a light string has a fuse on it. So, this string has a normal little male plug, which is pretty common. But, some strings have a fuse plug. Uh, you don't normally see that on longer light strings, on more commercial stuff, but if you buy some pre-made things, they'll probably have a fuse plug. Be aware of what the fuse is rated at, otherwise if you plug too many together or put too many bulbs on it, you can blow the fuse, start having all sorts of issues, and no one wants that. You need to know how many lights you intend on using on your decorating job. So, Know how many lights you're going to have to hang up and then what type of wattage they, they are and that goes a long way in calculating the amps later on. You need to know how long of a light string run you're needing to create or how big of an area you need to cover because that way you can know how to chop up the light strings to fit the application or if you can just use one light string, one long light string. You also need to know the power that is available to you. If you are running off a couple different circuits, how many available amps do each of those circuits have? Know that before you start getting up on a ladder on a roof and plugging lights up because if you don't have enough juice, the lights aren't going to work and um, you're going to be kicking yourself for not knowing that beforehand. So, doing the math on this is pretty simple. It's just some simple multiplication and uh, division. You need to know beforehand that one amp is approximately 110 watts. Now, one amp in the States is usually 120. We work with 110 just because I always work on uh, Murphy's Law. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. So play it a little safe. You're going to be happier if you, uh, if you do because you can kind of go over that number when you're decorating and put a few extra lights, but you can always go below that and it's always going to be better to not go too far because it's harder to fix that after you've done it. So, <clears throat> I'll put the little equation up here on the screen. You need to know your bulb wattage. You multiply that times the number of bulbs, and that'll give you the total wattage that you are needing to pull. You take that total wattage and divide it by 110, and that'll give you the amps that you are going to be using. Now that way, you can say, I have five amps that I'm going to be pulling. I'm going to be putting that on a seven amp wire, so I'll be fine. I can run that entire thing and I won't have to cut it up. So let's do a quick example. If you have a five watt bulb and you're running a hundred bulbs, that's 500 watts. Pretty simple. You take those 500 watts and divide it by 110 and that will say that you have 4.55 amps that you're pulling. So if you're running a 10 amp wire, you can definitely light 100 5 watt bulbs. 
The same formula works in reverse, and I'll put that in the description so you can check that out if you want to start with the number of amps that you have and how many bulbs you can put on that light string. It's the, this is pretty much the same thing, only flip backwards. So check that out in the description. A couple caveats whenever you are uh, planning a lighting project. Like I said, you have to be aware of how much power you have. And apart from that, you also need to know what else is on that circuit. If you're plugging into a circuit that also has a freezer or a refrigerator or something that's constantly on and running, you need to know that because just because it's a 20 amp circuit doesn't mean 20 amps are available. So be aware of that. If you don't know how to check that yourself, uh, call an electrician or somebody that can find that out for you before you want to you know, really go crazy and definitely over exceed what is available to you on that certain circuit. Most places have um, multiple circuits whenever they're doing decorating projects. A lot of uh, commercial installations will have dedicated circuits just for their lights. So, you know, just don't believe that you can plug into any household outlet, do a whole project because you really can't. Another thing you need to be aware of is how to run lights together. Just because this light string can handle 7 amps does not mean once you exceed or, or meet 7 amps on this light string that you can plug another string into the end of it. That is not how it works. That will still be growing the number of watts that you're pulling off this wire because it's all going through it like a you know just a tube. So what you have to do is after you exceed let's say 7 amps on one string you have to start a new power source. So plug into a power strip, an extension cord, something that is going to uh, start a whole new run. Uh, it's kind of annoying, I know, but that's how it has to be done. So be aware of that. And one thing you have to be aware of when you're, when you're running uh, mainly LED lights is voltage drop off. LED lights use no power. And when you're decorating a long distance, you can really do a very, very, very long run with um, out ever changing the light string. You don't necessarily have to have uh, breaks in the line. But since LEDs can go so far, the light line itself will kind of have a voltage drop off, which means as the, the light string gets longer, the amount of power that goes, it just shrinks. So the lights might not be as bright near the end of the string and you want everything to be consistent and look as nice as possible. So we don't recommend with LEDs running more than five to six hundred feet of light line um, just because you're going to experience that voltage drop off and it's very annoying. So thanks for checking out the video. Remember to like and subscribe. Uh, click the links down below and thanks for watching. We're going to have more videos coming soon so stay tuned and take it easy. See ya.